would your mom be angry with that? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. It looks pretty, right? <laughs> what's, the, what's the most painful spaces? Well, nipples. Nipples, one of them, that's for sure. Palms, really painful. Um, I have, like, everything by experience. So, you know, like, growing area is really painful. Your butt crack is painful. Your head is painful. Well, everything is painful. <laughs> My name is Chi Wan An. I do tattoos in Calgary, Canada, specialized in black and gray realism. So I was born and raised in Korea. I was a student and I went to military. I was Marine for two years. After finishing the military, I was lost. So, you know, just uh, came to Canada. Um, just for experience, whatever, just learning English or whatever, whatever experience I could get. And I got tattoo on my shoulder and that dragged me into the tattoo. I really liked it, wanted to get more tattoos, but in Korea it's just tough to get or like have a lot of tattoos and get a job or doing normal life. So I was thinking, okay, well, what can I do if I want to get more tattoos? And I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna stay in Canada, get more tattoos, then probably I can start tattooing so that I can have that in lifestyle. And that's how I did, and here I am. So you became a tattooer so that you could get more tattoos? That's right, so that's how it started. My thought process was like, Okay, if I do tattoos, then who cares if I have so many tattoos or not, you know? That was the beginning of it. So what did your family think about you becoming a tattoo artist? Well, they, they thought it was a joke. Um, I, uh, I got a shoulder tattoo that was like 15, maybe 16 years ago. Soon after, I got my half sleeve, and that time I showed it to my parents and um, they were like so upset and they disowned me and you know, they wanted to disown me. And um, you know, that's, that was like basically disaster. And I visited a very short time, time in, in Korea and uh, I just made my parents sad and came back here. And then I basically didn't talk about it for a decade tattoo, doing tattoos or getting tattoos or things like that and uh, I was hiding it whole time. So your family didn't know that you were doing tattoos? Well, uh, the end of it, they knew it but then I didn't really say that I was doing. Back then I was doing part-time tattooing anyway. So I was having all different jobs and try to immigrate here. So I had to go through the schooling, I had to go um, having some work experience, what government says, so that I can be qualified for immigration. So I was working at a job, I was uh, doing uh, the mortgages broker at a bank. I was janitor, I was cashier, I was cook, like you name it, like whatever makes me money. While I was doing it, I was doing tattoos as well, but I omit that part of it and then tell everything oh, else. So yeah, so yeah. You tell Told them that you were doing the job and then you were That's right. That's right, yeah. Undercover yeah. Artist. yeah. So now that you're established and successful, what do they think about it? Well, actually, they saw my lifestyle about three, four years ago. So I've been tattooing. I started tattooing in 2009 and then I was part time for a few years, switched to full time about 10 years ago. But up until three years ago, my parents didn't believe or trust me that I'm actually doing good in this profession until they actually saw my lifestyle. Um, everybody thinks that, you know, like tattoo art is just having party or, you know, joking around and, you know, things like that. It's not a serious job. But my parents came here and then they saw the lifestyle. Basically, I was working 
like two, three full-time job. I was working all the time, really grind and really hustle. They saw uh, I'm getting some awards from the conventions and getting some recognition from people and stuff like that. So uh, after they saw it, they rethought about this career and myself. So, you know, they are okay now, but yeah, up until that point, it was just, yeah, I was horrible son to them, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, before you even do that, I was just uh, um, actually calculating 10 years ago, not calculating, but then to show them how much I can actually make. And they thought it was joke, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Just to convince them that I wanted to tattoo, but then that didn't work out anyway. But actually, I didn't know how much they're actually making, but then I could see they're making more than I was making anyway. I don't know, I was, I was drawing when I was a kid. I learned, my friend's mom was a um, drawing teacher. I think I was maybe like grade two or three or something like that. And we lived in the same apartment and she was doing home-based business, teaching drawing for the kids and stuff like that. When I started drawing or painting, my background is still life pencil drawing so black and gray is more comfortable for me but i did a lot of colors too um, study about colors and getting you know all these color tattoos to study and learn um, but black and gray is more appealing to me i like the uh, the fact that when you um, do the black and gray when it was fresh and when it's healed um, the settling into the skin, that process and healed product, I'm really fascinated about it. So, you know, that's what I like now. Who knows if I like the color later on, maybe I switch again. But I did a lot of color realism or Asian style tattooing before, but now I'm just focusing on realism, black and gray. What's the favorite tattoo that you've ever done? Um, there are a few things I like. I like doing their family pets or family member portraits because, you know, there's something every time they bring in different uh, reference photos, their family is all different, you know, they look the different or, or facial expression is all different. So whenever they bring in, it's just kind of different. And also when I do them, the reaction is priceless. You know, it could be memorial, it could be their loved ones, it could be, you know, whatever. Then, you know, it's just kind of a different reaction I get um, when I tattoo that, so I like that. Sometimes they're really emotional, they're crying. Um, even during the process, they just vent out their emotion about the incidents they had or, you know, the, the relations or, you know, things like that. It's just, uh, yeah, pretty interesting. So as a tattoo artist, you're kind of like a therapist too. I, I guess we, we say pain therapy, but I think it's not about the pain. It's about the connection in between clients and the tattoo artists, because when they're getting tattooed, they're going to sit uh, in the chair for hours and they're in pain. So they become really vulnerable uh, and they you know, tend to open up a little bit more when they're in pain. So, you know, in that way, after they vent out, I think they just feel better. Lots of people just say it's a pain therapy, but I think it's not about just the pain. It's about venting out and they just don't have that much of a space or a place or a person to actually talk about for hours like that. And yeah, it's just like I become their one audience listening all that what they have to say and then um they just vent out right so do you think people come to you sometimes to talk not specifically just for talking <laughs> uh no i don't think so no. but i don't think okay. so yeah they just come for tattoo but then that just happened without us knowing it has anyone really hated the tattoo that you gave them uh, I, I, I hope there's no one, but I know like at the beginning of my career, I know that I made a mistakes, you know, 
I was just doing straight outline letters on a girl's uh, wrist right here. But then I was nervous, so I was just trying to make the straight outline, but I just couldn't make the outline. So it was all shaky and stuff. I could see her face right away. She didn't like it, but then I just didn't know what to do either. <laughs> So I'm like, okay, well, just pay me and just go, 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 right? And then uh, after that, I was, you know, I couldn't sleep for days and days, you know? Yeah, I took it seriously, so, you know, definitely it wasn't the style, but uh, yeah, that was horrible. A few other stuff, actually, the, by mistake, mistake stuff is just funny stuff. I think every tattoo artist go through this one, too. So. This is on a girl too. This is even more horrible because it's a bigger tattoo and it was across the chest. <laughs> so it was a letter. So I forgot what it said, but anyway, two phrases. One phrase here, one phrase here. There was my apprentice and me tattooing and the client, the lady. We checked it before we tattoo. So what it says exactly, spells right and everything we checked and everything was right. So we put that stencil on her chest and then we double checked, triple checked, all three of us. So my apprentice checked, everything was correct and she checked everything was correct, I checked everything was correct, so we started tattooing. I started tattooing, so I finished the one phrase and then started the second phrase and I felt something wrong. I said, fuck, and she said, don't joke about it. I'm like, I'm not joking, this is fucked, I just made a mistake. And she goes, what? And uh, we realized we put same phrase twice here and then started tattooing but then i started already second phrase which is same phrase that i just had too and i'm like fuck, fuck 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 what do i do what do i do what do i do right and then i'm like fuck this tattoo is free i'm gonna do the the free cover up right now and um you know like i just had to do the cover up right away and um yeah so that's gonna be a bit of Oh man, like sweating and shit. That was that was horrible. If I think back, it's a funny story, but that time at the moment, oh yeah, I was sweating. You know, like those like first timer, I mean uh, my beginning of career, I didn't know better anyway, so you know, I was taking tattooing seriously, so I those little mistake I was really you know, frustrated and couldn't sleep for days and stuff. But there is a point that you get a little confident now that you feel like, oh, I can do this, I can do this, I can do that, that's no problem. And then did it and then didn't come out the way that I was thinking, then that's also the, uh, you know, the problem. And um, I did a, someone's wife portrait and it just didn't come out the way that I was thinking. Uh, and his, his wife portrait, you know, is important, right? So I was just comparing for the photos and tattoo that I did and everything was correct. So I did all the shading, all the darks, all the lights, everything was correct. But because it's tattoo, placement is really important. So uh, I did it little oversized on the forearm. So the end of the face is just rolled down to the, um, the side of it. So because it's rolled, it just looks different, even though I was doing everything perfect. And then I just couldn't, I was sick for three days, four days. Those kind of little mistakes reminds me of my, uh, my early career. That time, my regret that time was I shouldn't get paid for it. I should done it just for free. But I took the money, you know, because I didn't know what to do. Like, just give me the money and just fuck out of here, right? But always that was back of my mind. So, you know, like I just needed to be honest to the client. So I'm like, okay, well, I think this is a little bit wrong. So I just recover my sickness from the tattoo. Like I was sick for like three or four days and but just sick because, because of that tattoo, they're thinking about it and just made me sick. Actually, I called up after that 
after healing that I just wanted to do a few things just to make it correct. But like he didn't think that it was, you know, it was uh, wrong or anything. But then just, you, you just me that, you know, critical, critique myself or things. But I don't know, he didn't say anything to me. But I called up and then I said, I'm gonna fix something stuff. And you know, like I uh, actually um, talked to him how I feel about it. And then we actually put other decoration on the face. So, you know, everybody knows that it's his wife, but also we, I, you know, like kind of hide all these the mistakes or, you know, things that I don't like under that uh, decoration um yeah so yeah that's that so that was that was experience too all right i actually have a story about this painting here so i bought this one from korea on the street so like more like very old style of korean house i was starting to making making money by tattooing and you know in this industry usually minimum charge is anywhere between like hundred dollars to two hundred dollars it can be three hundred dollars um, you know if they are well known and depending on style it can be even more even if you get one line or a little letter or something like that, that you're going to get the minimum payment, which is 100, 200, 300, whatever you charge. However, this painter in Korea, he was older, probably my dad generation, maybe early 60 or I don't know. He looked a little older on the street doing paintings, old paintings and he was having all these paintings that he did on the wall but he was sitting maybe just on the corner of this station really small um, space while he was painting then he tried to sell this painting but this one was about maybe twenty dollars with a frame if you think about all the currencies and all that stuff um, korea is not the cheap but then just he was selling this one for $20 framed, old painting, original. And then I was thinking, okay, well that old guy doing paintings, probably he loves what he does, but really struggling for financially, you know, you can see this one is just $20. Then think about myself that, you know, I'm working inside and uh, mark people and still making money more than him then you know like just makes me humble um, so just as a reminder i put it in my wall here some of the people my clients looking at this one whole time when they're getting tattooed so yeah it's a reminder and it's always here um, basically i collected um, tattoo from the people that I was looking up to so you know all these tattoo um, I like those you know tattoos that I have everything but, so, uh, so you'd contact an artist that you like that you that's right yeah that's a great way to uh, learn about what you want to learn also for me like I was getting tattooed by the people that I was looking up to and uh, I learned uh, that way so like just observe how they do color theory and stuff like that and then I uh, Apply to my skill and that's how I learned. What's your favorite tattoo on your body? Um, I like my little face tattoo here uh, It's just personal meaning um, tattoo so it's yeah. Private. It's not. Private. It, yeah. Yeah. That's why the the font that I wrote is just not really readable. Oh, okay. Yeah. I like my palm tattoos. Those are little simple tattoos, but one of my favorite. It's a Korean pattern. So traditional pattern type deal. Yeah. Top is uh, from Japan. Shige. The artist's name is Shige. Um, it's a it's a dragon. I really like also. 
And、um, yeah, this one made my mom cry a lot too. <laughs> <laughs> Why? It's well, Japanese. no, it's not because it's Japanese. Is you know really visible and really hardcore.、Um, I like I said, I hide, I I hid my tattoos for a decade on my full body. So. so At first half sleeve I had, I showed them, and then second time when I showed them my tattoo, I had a full body suit already. And then my mom just like you know, she was just crying and you know like made it her you know really really sad. And then that was a short visit. She was here for like two weeks or something like that, and then she was in shock already because I had a full body suit, right? But then the end of that two weeks, just night before she left, I said, "Mom, I'm gonna get head tattooed." <laughs> And she was like, "What the fuck? You're fucking crazy! You're crazy! Fuck off! You know, you're just like trying to disown." And also, like she was crying so bad, and my dad was really upset. My plan was I was getting my head tattoo just like within the six months period of time, but then I had to postpone like three, four years, just like calm them down a little bit, and then <laughs> I just waited. Yeah, I waited a little bit more. I got it eventually. I can just get naked, probably just show. Yeah. I don't know. It looks pretty, right? <laughs> well, yeah. I I don't know. It's just like、um, I guess it's pretty hardcore. Even if when like the end of、um, end of it, I probably told them I have tattoos. But then like knowing that I have tattoo and actually seeing in person, that impact is different, right? So. Like you don't see、uh, lots of people fully tattooed like me,、um, and when they see me for the first time, you know it's kind of like eye-opening or shocking for them. I don't see I don't see myself tattooed actually. Like even if you look in the mirror, it just becomes part of you. So you don't actually see the tattoos. You see you. That's it. But other people see me, and then they see tattoos first. I think. Like oh, like surprise! Your body is colorful and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is called Sachanwang,、uh, Korean Buddhism god.、Um, there are four gods that、uh, protecting the sky is in Korean Buddhism way. So this is just one of them. They're protecting the four side of the sky,、uh, and usually they are located in. Uh, the main door of the temple. So when you go into the temple, they're actually、uh, there to protect the temple as well. My armpits tattooed, and one of the biggest tattoo. Well, I guess I have only one tattoo on my body, but my back piece that is also the、uh, guy did in Japan,、uh, who did my head. Uh, same guy did my back piece, and the back piece coming from shoulder to back of my knees, for one piece, and、um, that one took me about five years, four years, five years back and forth from Canada to Japan. I did a、uh, two days back to back session. The most days that I took was four days back to back sessions. And、um, maybe at least two to four times a year, and、um, I did it for five years to finish it.、Uh, there are multiple artists. Some of them are my friends. Some of them are、um, the people、um, that I'm looking looking up to. So this leaf, this skull,、uh, Nick Chabuya did it、uh, from U.S. Randy Inglard from Germany. Um, Jeff Kogue、uh, from U.S. and my head and my back piece、uh, Shige in Japan. 
James Tex uh, in Calgary. Um, this is also Jeff Kokuway. And some of my leg pieces. Um, Damian Robertson. Um, some, you know, like um, reputable people. And one thing I wanted to mention about this blackout um, calf piece when I started tattoo when there's no one to practice you know so I just started practicing on myself so there's so many layers underneath here so I practice and then practice again practice again practice again and um, at the end it was just a big mess so I just black it out <laughs> to make it clean so now it's all black and then uh, these ones I practice on me too earlier days so sitting down and you know, just practice on me here, looking in the mirror and It stuff. must be difficult to tattoo your leg. Yeah, it's definitely not easy because you know exactly when needle's going into you, so... <laughs> I started with this shoulder piece here, which is covered with my half sleeve. When I did my half sleeve, it's covered. And then I did a full sleeve, and at that point I was like, you know, start thinking about, oh, I want to get more tattoos, so, like, I just gotta stay here, kind of stuff. The decision to live in Canada happened because you wanted more tattoos. Yeah, sorta. Because, um, tattooing is illegal in Korea, but my parents were working for government. Oh. So, that was kind of the main reason that I tried to stay here, because, you know, my parents have a good reputation as a government worker, but then son going into the country and doing illegal shit, you know, it's just not, not yeah, cool yeah, for yeah. them. Even though it's not like illegal, illegal, it's more like getting popular and everything. Everybody does it, everybody know people are doing it, but then it's still illegal from the previous verdict. They are saying only doctors or, you know, people who have doctor's license because we are using needles, only they can do it. I'm gonna get naked now and show you around. <laughs> so that's the back piece. All right, I'm gonna zoom right in on your butt cheeks. It's got hind legs. Yeah, it's all uh, she she. It's the leg here, face here, around here, I think. full bodysuit itself was a journey um, everything you need uh, money to do it you need a uh, time to do it you need uh, uh, pain tolerance to do it and it is really you know commitment so good tattoo or shitty tattoo doesn't really matter if you have a full body tattoo that's a respect <laughs>